Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing my 23 books I need to read in 2023 video. I need to bring the book card over here. Uh, there we go. So these are 23 books that I own physically. I just pulled books off my shelves, like whatever I haven't read yet. And these are like 23 books that I own physically that I would really like to get to soon in 2023. I have so many physical books that I still need to read and my biggest goal, like my biggest reading goal in 2023 is to read as many of these physical books that I own that I can um, and kind of dwindle down my physical TBR. You know, I read a lot of Kindle books because I pay for Kindle Unlimited. I listen to a lot of audiobooks. I just randomly, like as books come out, you know, I get new releases and stuff like that. And I've been neglecting like the books that I own. So these are just 23 horror and thriller books that I own that I would really like to read as soon as possible and just dwindle down some of this massive <laughs> DBR that I have. I'm currently on a no book buying ban? No book buying? Book buying? A book buying ban. <gasps> yeah. So yeah, I plucked them all off their shelves and I'm just going to go through kind of one by one from my book card here. First one is a thriller. It's Still House Lake. I've owned this for quite some time and I've heard a lot of hype surrounding this book but still haven't read it. I believe it's a trilogy. Listen, I don't fucking have time for that. These books where there's like three books. Ugh. Anyways, um, this one sounds good. I've heard good things. Um, so this is about this girl, Gina. And it says she's a housewife with a happy marriage and two kids, but she's in a car accident. And that accident reveals her husband's secret life as a serial killer. Bitch, what? So with her ex now in prison, she's found refuge in this home on a remote, on remote Stillhouse Lake. But she's still the target of stalkers and internet trolls. And now she's starting to feel ease in her new identity. But now she's starting to get threatening letters again, arriving from an all too familiar address. I don't know. Sounds like it might be good. I'm looking forward to reading this one. And then next is a horror anthology. I have so many anthologies to get through because I get them in like my Nightworms packages, which is where this one came from. So this one is Human Monsters by, it's edited by Sadie and Ashley from Nightworms. And there are some really good authors in this little like short story collection. Samantha Kolesnik, um, Nat Cassidy, uh, Gemma Amore, um, Laurel Hightower, like a lot of authors, Stephen Graham Jones, Caroline Kapniz, Josh Mallerman, like a lot of authors that I like and respect are in here as long as like a whole bunch that I've never heard of. So I'm hoping that like I can discover some new authors, but I'm not like the biggest fan of short story collections, but these like this sounds like a good one. There's 35 uh, short stories in here. So I can't wait and the cover is stunning. So yeah. Then I have, this is kind of a contemporary, but it's Bird Hits Glass by, uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce their name, but this is about a woman with a mysterious chronic illness. So she falls ill and is finding it harder and harder to, you know, get through her daily life. It says she's increasingly lonely and desperate to heal when she discovers a chronically ill social media influencer. She's filled with hope that recovery is possible while beginning to question her assumptions about relationships, love, and what it means to live a full life. My friend Megan um, read this and enjoyed it and she actually gave it to me for my birthday. So I can't wait to get to this one. I've been kind of holding off because I've been dealing with so many health issues. I mean, I always am all the time, but lately it's been really rough. So like the last thing I want to do is like read a book about health issues. So I'm like waiting till I like feel a little bit better to read this one um, because I know it's probably going to hit heavy for me but I'm just like reading horror until then. <laughs> Next, a book that I've owned forever and still have yet to read is The Last House on Needless Street by Catriona Ward. 
I know I hear a lot of mixed things about this one. It seems like the overall consensus is that most people enjoy this book, um, but I just, I never got to it. I don't know what it is. Like, I just never read it. And then, like, the longer I go without reading it, like, I just keep reading newer books and this and that. And, like, I just never got to it. But I really, really need to get to this one, like, in the beginning of 2023. Um, I'm pretty sure we get the perspective of like a cat <laughs> in parts of it. It sounds like a weird one. Um, it's a about a boarded up house on a dead end street uh, where this teenage girl isn't allowed outside. Not after last time, a man who drinks alone in front of his TV trying to ignore, ignore the gaps in his memory and a house cat who loves napping and reading the Bible. Like what the fuck? unspeakable secrets bind them together but when a new neighbor moves in next door what is buried among the birch trees may come back to haunt them all sounds weird sounds intriguing then another thriller i would like to get to is the family plot by megan collins i've been looking forward to reading this one and checking it out it's about this um woman this 26 year old woman dahlia um she's haunted by her upbringing and she has these like true crime obsessed parents that obviously named her delilah Del dahlia after like the black Dahlia murder. So it's about her and her family. They go back to their old house after the father passed away and they notice uh, when they return to the house, the family makes a gruesome discovery. Buried in their father's plot is another body, Andy's. That is her brother that went missing when they were 16. So now she's like, oh my god, is it a serial killer? Uh, she thinks it's a serial killer that killed her brother and now they're like what happened with the dad like what is going on it sounds good it sounds intriguing and I've been looking forward to reading this guy then I have an extreme horror full brutal by Christopher Triana I'm trying to read more Christopher Triana because I really liked Gone to See the River Man but I heard like mixed things about the other books so we'll see um but this is about this girl who decides to lose her virginity to one of her teachers she's a teenager and it leads her on this life of sadism and she decides that she wants to start like ruining lives for a living um yeah <laughs> we'll see it's supposed to be messed up i uh, can't wait and then another extreme horror is um, this Judith Sonnet, something akin to revulsion. It's a short story collection. It's going to be really quick to get through. So I'm sure I'll get through this in like a day. But yeah, just a nice little short story collection. And then a thriller, um, His and Hers by Alice Feeney. This is the only Alice Feeney that I have yet to read. I've heard very mixed things about this one, but this is about this woman, Anna, who is a BBC news anchor, and she's reporting on a woman's murder. And then there's a detective who is suspicious about Anna's involvement in the case. He know he knows she knew the victim, but hasn't told anyone that he knew her too. So Jack realizes he is a suspect in his own murder investigation. So it says someone knows that someone knows more than they are letting on. So it says someone is always lying. It's just like your typical Alice Feeney unreliable narrator, I'm sure. So we'll see. Next is just a regular horror near the bone by Christina Henry. I would love to get to this in January. It's just like a snowy horror book and it's about a woman trapped on a mountain attempting to survive more than one kind of monster in a dread inducing horror novel. Um, it says Maddie can't remember a time she and William lived alone on a mountain together. She must never make him upset but when Maddie discovers the mutilated body of a fox in the woods she realizes that they're not alone after all. There's something in the woods that wasn't there before. Something that makes strange cries at night something with sharp teeth and claws i think this is like a creature feature which i'm not the biggest fan of but i've heard amazing reviews about this one next karen slaughter kiss cut this is the second book in the grant county series i would love to at least finish up the grant county series this year and maybe start the will will trent series i absolutely love karen slaughter but um i just haven't been reading her books lately i read blindsided and then i just like I've been reading everything else so I really would like to buckle down and read my girl Karen Slaughter. I know the Will Trent is like a series that's coming out now. Um, so yeah, 
we'll see. Then A Sci-Fi Thriller Pines by Blake Crouch. I need to read this book. This has been sitting on my TBR like month after month for like a year and a half. I don't even know what is wrong with me. I love Blake Crouch. This one is about this man um, he's a secret service agent. His name's Ethan and he arrives in search of two missing federal agents but he discovers much more than he bargained for. After a violent accident lands him in the hospital, Ethan comes with no ID, no cell phone, the medical staff seems friendly but something feels off. So yeah, I read the first chapter of this one for a vlog and it seems pretty crazy like he wakes up and has no memory of where he is or what he's doing there. And I can't wait. This one is a series, I believe. And I also think it's a show or a movie. I think it's a show. A Netflix? I don't remember, but excited. Then this one is a horror comedy. John dies at the end. Um, I don't know how I'm going to feel about this one. It seems intriguing. I like horror comedy. Like stuff that's supposed to be horror comedy. I don't like when horror has like weird shit in it. But if it's like intentional horror comedy. I like it. Um, but it's about a drug that can destroy the fabric of reality itself and it falls into the hands of these two small town dudes who are not equipped to deal with it. Will anyone make it out alive? So yeah, I don't know. It's a series. I know there's like a couple books and I've heard mixed things. Some of you guys said you liked it. Some of you guys told me I will absolutely hate this we'll see. Then I have another Jennifer McMahon, The Drowning Kind. I really want to read more Jennifer McMahon. I really love her writing. I think she is extremely talented and I do really enjoy the two books that I've read from her so far. So this one, um, oh, oh no, this one is stuck together. I know Gabby really liked this one. Uh, this one is just about this woman who returns to her old family home after her sister mysteriously drowns in the swimming pool, but she's not the only victim. I think this kind of does the same thing as the winter people. Like I think it flips between like present day and the past, which I know doesn't work for some people because it has a 1929 like storyline, I'm pretty sure. I'm not, yeah. Um, so I think this is gonna probably be similar to The Winter People, which I really liked. I know it didn't work for other people, so we'll see. And I have a YA by my favorite YA author, Tiffany D. Jackson, Monday's Not Coming. I cannot wait to read her entire backlist in 2023. Um, I really enjoyed the two books that I've read by her so far, so I can't wait to read this one. This one is just about this girl whose best friend disappears. It says, nobody noticed she was gone except for me and nobody cared until they found her one year later. Don't know anything else. Don't want to know anything else. I can't wait. I can't wait to read this one. Sounds so good. And then keeping on the trend of YA, I don't know. The other um, way that I would like to read is Good Girl Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. Ew, this has like this old, I hate these fucking Target stickers. Why do they keep doing this shit? But um, this is the second book in A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. Absolutely loved the first book. Um, I'm looking forward to finishing the trilogy off. I might have to reread the first one because I don't remember a whole lot about it. But we're following Pip as she's trying to write her school paper on these like murders in her town. And so the first book followed this like, it was different uh, mixed media. So it was like her in present day and then her doing interviews and like recordings and different things. And it was just interesting. Um, and now she has a true crime podcast. I'm not like the biggest fan. I think podcast elements are like overdone, but, um, yeah, I heard good things about the second book. I heard bad things about the third book. So we'll see. I'm just looking forward to finishing the whole trilogy off, honestly, because like I, I barely even remember the first one. I'm just going to have to reread all three of them back to back, I think. Then the next horror is Ring by Koji Suzu Suzuki. Suzuki, Suzuki, whatever. Um, so this one is the book that the movie The Ring is based off of. So this one, um, you know, we're following the cursed film aspect with the mysterious videotape that warns the viewer will die in one week unless a certain act is performed. Heard good things about this one. I can't wait to check it out. Another horror I would like to get to is this chunky boy. It is Battle Royale by Kozuchin Takami. Kozushan Takami? So this one is a battle royale. 
So this is about a um, bunch of kids. How old are they? I think they're probably, yeah, junior high. I think they might be different ages than like we are in junior high in the States. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know. I think they're supposed to be like middle schoolers. And um, it says that they're taken to a deserted island where they have to kill each other until one is left standing. Like, what the fuck? I can't wait to read this one. Heard excellent things from McKay and Gabby where like all of these books are inspired by. This one is so long. It's like over 600 pages. It's like 600, 650 pages, but can't wait. I need to be like focused when I go into this one. Next, another author that I would like to read the entire backlist of in 2023 is Anya Albor, and This one is A Part in the Dark. This is two different novellas, The Pretty Ones and I Call Upon Thee. Um, the Pretty Ones is about, it's set in 1977. And it says the self-proclaimed plain Jane does her best to fit in with the girls at work, but Nell's brother Barrett assures her that she'll never be like them. When Nell manages to finally garner some much yearned for attention, the unthinkable happens and the truth is awful to comprehend. And then I Call Upon Thee is about this girl Maggie and she had a pretty ordinary childhood and then there were darker things. The shadow that followed her from the cemetery and settled into the corners of her home, refer refusing to let her grow up in peace. Now, after three years away from the place, she's convinced she turned haunted. And after yet another family tragedy strikes, Maggie is forced to return to the unbearable heat of the Savannah summer and come to terms with her past. So, yeah, two different novellas. I would like to read her entire backlist. I think I read, I don't know, five books by her so far, and I really liked all of them. Um, some of them were kind of eh, like the shuddering and the neighbors were okay for me. I think the shuddering is my least favorite of the ones that I've read so far. Um, but I'm really looking forward to reading her whole backlist. I absolutely love Brother is just like my favorite book ever. So I really am looking forward to just finishing up all of her books. Then I have Cackle by Rachel Harrison, a witchy book. She's just kind of like a cozy horror author. And this one is just about this girl Annie and she dumped her long time boyfriend and see she's seeking a fresh start. She accepts a teaching position, moves to Manhattan, and she's stunned how perfect and picturesque the town is. The people are all friendly and warm. Her apartment is dreamy, aside from the oddly persistent spider infestation. Then Annie meets Sophie, beautiful, charming, magnetic. <laughs> it's me, just kidding. <laughs> She takes a special interest in Annie and wants to be her friend. More importantly, she wants Annie to stop apologizing and start living for herself. She can't help but gravitate toward- this is so long. Why is this so long? Sophie's appearance is uncannily, uncanny and ageless. She's probably a witch, okay? We get it. She's probably a witch. Next, I have Firefly Lane by Kristen Hanna. So random for me. I read the Nightingale by Kristen Hanna, which is one of my favorite books of all time. This is a five star stunning fucking masterpiece. I've read a couple books by her. I liked all of them. So I'm looking forward to reading more books from her because I think she is an incredible author. And this one is just like a contemporary fiction, I guess, um, about these friends and, um, it's about these besties for 30 years. They're there for each other, um, weathering the storms of friendship. They think they survived it all until an unexpected betrayal tears them apart and puts their friendship to the test. This is a show on Netflix. So I want to read this one. And then there's also a second one too called Fly Away. I don't know. I'm going to check them out, see what the tea is. Then I have um, Heartstopper Volume 2 by Alice Osman. I read the Volume 1, bought t Volumes 2, 3, and 4 and never fucking read them. It's just classic me. Um, but I would like to read Volumes 2, 3, and 4, finish off <laughs> this series. What is wrong with me? But it's just about um, this couple, Nick and Charlie, this gay couple, and kind of like the challenges that they face, um, you know, coming out as high school students. Two more. 
two more. I got a manga here. This is, of course, Junji Ito Uzumaki. Um, I've really been wanting to read this one um, and just haven't got around to it in 2022. So this one is about the spiral that haunts the town. Everyone tells me that this is their favorite Junji Ito, so I can't wait to read this. Like, his art is everything. It's gorgeous, so can't wait. And then last but not least, Lisa Jewell. I would like to finish up Lisa Jewell's backlist. This is the house we grew up in. Um, this is just about this woman, Meg, <laughs> me. But this is just about a family and it says, one Easter weekend, a tragedy tears them apart. Years pass and the children become adults. And I don't know, it just sounds like a family drama. It's like thriller family drama tea that sort of thing so yeah I'm just looking forward to finishing up Lisa's backlist as well I really would like to get to a lot of backlisted books this year and finish up all my favorite authors and their backlists maybe I can do some like author ranking videos let me know if you're interested in that and I will see you in my next video bye